Another quick quote from the Revelation series. This is from volume two of the seven seals. And it's going to be on the soul and Plato and Aristotle. So um, I'm going to read these two paragraphs and I'm going to go back to the footnote here specifically on Plato. Plato amazes us. Aristotle astounds us. We admire some great philosophers, especially the Greek philosophers, because they managed to strike a tiny spark to penetrate and see behind the heavenly, the heavily sealed curtain of heaven. But their experience resembles that of looking through a convex lens. They saw some things clearly and directly as we would any object, but they were distorted. Look into a concave or convex mirror and you will see how it distorts your appearance. You will see face, but it will not be exactly like your face. It will appear disproportionate and distorted. People speak about the soul, but they could not know its real essence. As human history has revealed, people spoke about reincarnation, the death of the soul, as well as the, as well as the rational and spiritual soul, attempting to separate the two. Or they spoke about the biological soul and the spiritual soul, along with many other notions and falsehoods. Heaven needed to be reopened by God to reveal his mysteries to men, so men would have direct knowledge of these mysteries. Let us see how scriptures describes, Scripture describes this. Quote from John 3.13 No one has ascended into heaven, but he who had descended from heaven, the Son of Man. This verse seals everything that I have been referring to about the tightly closed heaven. Since no one ascended to heaven, how could anyone know what really transpired there? This is similar to the statement that many of our simple and doubting people often say, quote, Oh, who went to Hades to see it and tell us about these things? Who really knows? Who went to hell? Who went to paradise to get us proof? How do we know? All right, back to the footnote on Plato. So he says, Plato amazes us. And then the footnote, according to St. Nectarios of Aegina, Plato spoke with divine inspiration, proclaiming as the stenatorian Isaiah, the crucified death of the righteous one who suffers on account of righteousness. Quote, we must strip him of everything except his justice. Our just man must have the worst of reputations for wrongdoing, even though he has done no wrong wrong we shall give him an undeserved and lifelong reputation for wickedness and make him stick to his chosen course until death they will say that the just man as we pictured him will be scourged tortured and imprisoned his eyes will be put out and after enduring humiliation he will be crucified that was from plato the republic part one book two in uh St. Nectarios Christology is where the, quote, the original quote's from. Continue a little bit here. St. Nicodemus the Iorgite quotes the following noteworthy story concerning Plato recorded by the wise Nikitas of Ceres. Quote, A certain Christian would condemn the wise Plato excessively, criticizing him as an atheist and an evil man. However, Plato appeared to this person in a dream and said to him, quote, Do not criticize me pointlessly, my dear man. I do not deny that I am a sinner. However, when Christ descended to Hades, I was the first to believe him. Close quote. Thanks for listening.